Yo, 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 we back again, KRSM 98.9, every Monday morning from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. We got a special guest in the house, and uh, this, this this came about kind of, uh, I was making a, a tweet, you know, on, on Twitter, and I, <laughs> and, and, and this is how you connect to people. Uh, Heidi, can you introduce yourself and, 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 and tell a little bit about yourself and what you do? Yeah, for sure. Uh, my name is Heidi Brionis, and I live out in Portland. Uh, I essentially work in tech um, as far as my day job, but I ran for office um, in 2020 as a Democrat, actually. I'm no longer a Democrat, but I ran right. as a Democrat in 2020. Um, I lost. It was a you know, pretty, pretty big endeavor. It was a large um, or very popular, I guess, incumbent. Yeah. Uh, but through that process, I kind of discovered my political identity and um, things changed. I kind of lost my tribe. Essentially, I left I left the left. Um, and then I've sort of built, um, yeah, following in um, Web3 and tech as well as politics. Um, I'm pretty popular among the um, independent kind of libertarian-ish lefties. Um, so I have a very odd niche, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm having a good time. And I saw um, Prince Carlton's... Uh, tweet um regarding um you know feminists essentially um and the leah leah thomas story and i wanted to reach out and have a chat and see if we can come to an agreement on certain things even though we might not agree on everything i think that yeah, right. we, we might agree on some things that we can work together on we was on twitter i was on twitter i made a tweet and it was it's crazy how liberals and feminists Scream patriarchy every five seconds, but get very silent when a guy takes over women's swimming or uh become woman of the year. Uh kind of crazy. And that's the <laughs> that and, and, and so 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 it, that's the that's the tweet that that that's that kind of started that kind of started everything. Um okay, so tell me what you had the issue with uh uh, uh on that tweet. Yeah, um and you know how Twitter is, it's, it's sort of like you, you start seeing the same kind of thread, you know, like the, um, in tweets that come through, because you kind of follow similar people. And then you, right. you start seeing like people say the same things, the same thing, same thing. And then like, after like the 50th time of it bothering you, you like reply, you know, you're right. just like, that's it. <laughs> so it was kind of like that situation where like, I kept hearing like conservatives be like, feminists are silent on this issue what's up with feminists and like it was not just you like for sure right but then i saw yours and i was just like dude like yeah that's not that's not the case like feminists are actually been saying stuff for a while just nobody listens to feminists you know absolutely nobody's right. like oh you're a feminist yes please i want to hear all your opinions about everything now and i i would love to like, <laughs> like know right right it, it, exactly um so my point was yeah i feel like if we listen to if we listen to feminists, um, then you will find that, yes, they have been saying things for quite some time and then getting serious backlash, um, oftentimes, you know, violent backlash. I mean, your audience, you know, you can go look up turf is a slur, you know, turf is something that they call um, radical feminists. So trans exclusionary radical feminists. Mm, and right. if you go to T E R F um, I S S l u r dot com turf is a slur dot com you will see examples of um trans rights activists i'm not gonna say trans people because it's trans rights activists um yeah. you know, trans people is a very very broad um you know group and they don't all have the same beliefs but trans yeah. activists being um <coughs> either being violent or promoting violence against radical feminists um because radical feminists um, essentially are for them you know the female body women's rights and biological women's rights mm -hmm. um and that's what that's what they're about and that's their focus and so yes that does not include um trans women in almost every circumstance because it's about males and <laughs> that's what <laughs> um so that was, hey we've been getting a lot of backlash like we have been saying things and you know these trans activists come after us and you know it, it's quite scary for a lot of people um a lot of women to speak up for women's rights when you have essentially you know very radical um activists on the other side that are essentially male bodied you know they're, they're males mm -hmm. and they right. want to come after you and they're big and scary yeah <laughs> and absolutely so that's why a lot of women have been um somewhat silent but 
also, you know, have been saying things at the same time. It's just, a, you know, so I, I really think that on this issue, uh, conservatives and feminists, this is a good time for them to come together actually on this issue. I'm a big fan of people with different beliefs coming together when they do agree on something and getting things done. And I think that that's the only way you really get things done. If everybody stays in their own little tribe, doesn't like open mm -hmm. their mind and listen to yeah. other people, then you never know where you do agree and where you could make progress and where you could you know, actually work together on something to either, you know, make something better or to stop something from getting worse. Yeah. Absolutely. It, it, it's so, it's so crazy because today I was uh, uh, driving in the car and I saw that uh, it said concerned women of America. Have you ever heard of that? Concerned uh, CWA? Yeah, it's that like, sounds pretty familiar. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. It said concerned uh, women for America recently filed a formal civil rights complaint against the university of Pennsylvania uh against um uh, uh basically leah thomas you know and, and when i saw that today i'm like oh okay maybe how these maybe how he's right you know it's true though it's like i mean the work is being done i mean i have friends that are deep into it um you know and they've been working on this for years and and taking the abuse and everything else but um now I mean, honestly, probably because of Leah Thomas, I think that the tide is turning and people are so aware now. I think it's, it's sports is just something so, you know, I don't know, it's just so American, something everybody can connect with. It's everybody understands sports, right? You just, right. so that kind of issue is just like brought it um, to the light, you know, like you might not have cared as much about bathrooms. You might've been like, yeah, that's an issue or like things like that. Like, but when it's like sports, it just gets so many eyeballs, right? And right, then like right. everybody's like, oh, that's really not right. Like there's so many things yes. wrong with that. And then now you have, you know, people that have been saying this kind of stuff for quite some time are actually getting airtime, actually getting, you know, people supporting them and bringing in new people um, to support women's rights. So it's right. kind of amazing. Um, in a way, I think, honestly, I think Leah Thomas in a way, I mean, will kind of be the catalyst to stopping um, some of this extremism um, um, with the the gender the gender activists. Absolutely. So so, uh, so okay. So I, I know you uh, you kind of answered this in your last question. I mean, in the, like your last answer. But what is the definition <clears throat> of feminist? Because I, I think sometimes yeah. the actual definition of it may be different than the, than the way a lot of people take it when they actually hear the word. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, feminism has gone through many waves. So that's also a co confusion for people. You know, you had like the first wave of feminism, which is just very simple, like women should vote, <laughs> you know, right. and right. women should right. have like these, <laughs> these very basic human rights, you know, kind of similar to, you know, the black movement and everything. And like, you know, black people should be able to vote, we should be able to marry this kind of, you know, this kind of stuff right. that is like, you, you just think of as crazy that <clears throat> you know, women couldn't vote or black people couldn't vote. And that was like the very basic um, feminism is like women should be able to work um, if they want to, they should be able to vote. That just very simple things. And then you had, um, you know, the second wave essentially of feminism, which people also call radical feminism. And that's essentially what people call TERFs now. Um, their whole thing was about uh, the female body, um, feminine, femininity, empowerment around the female body, um literally they would sit in circles and like put a mirror you know down there and like everybody would check it out because like people didn't i guess women did not know what was going on in their actual body for a long wow. time you didn't, yeah you didn't talk about um <clears throat> periods you didn't talk about you know your ovaries you didn't talk about your whole stuff going on down there it was very very right. taboo um and so it was all around the female body and you know yes there was some crazy thoughts going on in, in that of course um, and then there were some good things and, you know, it, it sort of just opened people's eyes to like, oh yeah, the female body is amazing. Um, you know, it is feminism to me is about supporting females, supporting women, um, you know, realizing that they're special, they're beautiful, they're different than men. Um, right. we should respect them. Everybody has a mom, you know, yeah, it's, just Absolutely. Like, it's something that you just is so vital and we have to protect women. It's just part of that's what the way I see it is like actual femininity um rights women's rights and female bodied rights um but people have all different definitions and then you have the third wave come in which most people this is what most people think of as radical feminists I think is the third wave um and that is you know kind of the stuff we're seeing now um 
you know, it's almost like a, another wave is starting with this whole gender thing. But the third wave was yeah. very much like pro um, pornography, pro, uh, you know, sex work, pro women doing whatever they want, um, that kind of thing. And I think that's what m a lot of people think of as um, radical feminism when really it's like the last, <laughs> the last group. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah. <laughs> So radical feminists, like the second wave that I mentioned, are actually very much against sex work, very much against uh, pornography. They think that it's very harmful to women. Um, so it's been a fight for quite some time. Like there's, so when somebody says they're a feminist, they pretty much either mean that they're, you know, second wave, which is radical feminists, or they mean they're a third wave. Um, you know, there's so many differences, though. The second wave doesn't believe men can be feminists, which I agree with. Um, right. They say that that's ridiculous. Like you can't be a feminist if you're a man. Like only women can be feminists. Men can love okay. women. Men can respect women. Men can be right. allies. Men can be whatever they want. But they're not a feminist. Third wave will okay. say, "I'm a male feminist. I'm I'm a man. You know, I'm a feminist." And right, that, right. so the, it's very different. Like so, when you say feminism, people have all these different definitions, and everyone will define it differently. But I go to, I think you know, the most core belief is just, you know, women's bodies are different than men's and that, and because of that, they're special and we, you know, we need certain protections and certain rights due to the fact that our bodies are different. And Absolutely. Absolutely. You guys, you guys want to say that? Yeah, 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 because, uh, because, um, I, I agree. I agree with, with everything you just, <laughs> you, uh, you just said. Um, but but uh, um, a lot of times when when men hear the word uh, feminism or or feminist, we are we automatically think think that um, it's in some way uh, um, it's like women wanting to like exclude men in some sort of way. As far as like as far as like not as men want, wanting to be women, but like but as in like uh, men from the family or or like or like. Um, I, I I think that's that's probably the, the biggest issue is that is that men think that feminists are want to exclude men from the family. Is there any truth to that? Is is that a part of any wave? Yeah, that that could be seen as part of the second wave because during that time, I mean, that was sort of sixties, seventies when that kind of emerged, and that was the women's liberation movement. You know, women didn't want to be you know whatever they said barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen, um, that <laughs> right. type of a thing. So I could, yeah, there's definitely that side of it, um, which pros and cons, I mean, to that, I mean, it had definitely did start the deterioration of, you know, the nuclear family. So I can yeah. totally understand, um, you know, people that are conservative or traditional um, seeing it that way. And it, it's true. Um, do I think that, I mean, that's still what's going on? I mean, that's tough to say. Um, it's really tough to say because society's changed so much since then to the right. fact that it's not really a choice now for most women to work outside the home, unfortunately. Um, it's, it's just a reality. Um, so it, it's very complex as far as that goes. I mean, in a lot of respects, yes, there are some feminists that are anti-men, anti of course. Right. There are some. There are some that are... Um, you know, hate men and just think they're the worst things ever. But that, I don't think that that's even close to the majority. Um, most of the feminists that I know that are, you know, radical feminists, um, second wave feminists have husbands and families and, you know, love men and, you know, raise, raise boys and everything else and don't think that, you know, people should be without a father or any of that. So yes, there's absolutely truth in what you're saying. Um, so I can like, totally see that. However, Ugh, that's kind of neither here nor there. You know, that already right. happened in a way. It's like right. at that time, maybe I would have been against it. I would have been like, I don't think that that's good, like for kids and for families. Um, right. But I wasn't there. Um, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I, it's like the good things. The good things I think are protecting, you know, women's rights, making sure that you know we're we're protecting women and excluding men when they should be excluded. Essentially, when there's like an actual, you know, reason that women need their own space, um, you know, and sports is one, bathrooms are one, um, you know, there's different situations where we can all agree that it's just not for men. Like this, one, this one's for women. <laughs> right. And Absolutely. then you get all these other things too, that are the same, but different. It's just like things should be equal, but you know, but made for, you know, the, the group that they're for. Um, so essentially, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I agree with what you're saying. I could definitely see that, but I think that that's, that's a misnomer, and I think that it's unfortunate 
because um, if, if feminists, you know, were able to express themselves clearly, I think, um, and not come off, you know, so crazy <laughs> and like so <laughs> man hating, then I think that there would be a lot of places where feminists and conservatives can work together. And that's what we're seeing emerge now. And that's what we've been predicting, actually. Me and some of my other friends that are feminists have been predicting this moment for probably about four or five years. Being right. like, you know what? It's going to come down. <laughs> it's just going to be us and like conservatives. Yep. Like at some point, we're not, not going to agree on a lot and we're just going to like, work together on this and then that, it's going to be over, you know, it's just yep. over. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, so, so um, I remember, I remember like, uh, I think it was probably like maybe three or four years ago. Maybe it could be, could be two, two or three or four years ago. Um, like every, every turn I would get on social media and I would see, uh, men are trash. It, 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 it would, it would just, the, the minute the men are trash thing, just, all, just all the way down the news feed. And, <laughs> and, and, and I'm seeing here and it, and so like the circle that like my Facebook circle or my Twitter circle, um, it's like people could, cause I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a, a traditionalist as far as like I feel like men. I I don't feel like men or uh, uh, women should shouldn't go outside the house or anything. I feel like women 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 should work if they want to work if they don't. But I feel like uh, uh, men should um, provide. Men should protect. Men should uh, uh, like if if a bus was to come. If a bus was to come, I should jump in front of that bus to save my wife. You feel what I'm saying? Like I f- I feel like. That that's the that's the way uh it's supposed to go. And and uh sometimes I felt like me being a traditionalist, uh anything about it, I respect women and I respect um and I think women are beautiful. So it's like women are people who I think that men should protect, but I feel like sometimes I get some backlash. And women say, hey, you don't, I don't need protection from you. You feel what I'm saying? It's, it's like, I don't yeah. need protection from you. And, 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 and I'm trying to figure out, like, it, it's so crazy because I feel like, I don't know what wave the, the men are trash. What wave was that? I don't know what That's wave. That's definitely that third wave. Feminism. Okay. So third wave goes along with postmodernism um, and, like, Marxism, essentially. They're kind of right. all interwoven. Like, everybody's oppressed. Um, you know, right. and you have to Absolutely. find your reason to be oppressed, right? If, it, right? if you're, like, a, let's say you're, like, a white, well-to-do woman, okay, well, men are trash then. I'm oppressed because, you know, men are trash. Absolutely. Like, it's just, like, yes. it's just finding a reason why, like, you have that oppression. Um, right. You know, it's, yeah, so it's postmodernism, um, which is applied to everything now, including feminism, which is unfortunate. Um, you'll right. see it all over the place. And yeah, the men is trash thing. I definitely noticed that. Um, yeah, the Me Too movement is like another another example that kind of got crazy out of hand. Oh my gosh! Um, yeah, there's yeah. Uh, so, so, so when when the Me Too thing when the Me Too thing was going on, I felt like. Some of the see, I, I felt like some of the things were warranted, and some of the things uh, was going too far. I felt like it's it's so crazy because I used to, I used to text, I, I used to uh, uh, post, and I used to say, like, we're going to get put in a situation where men will go on dates with women, and it's so crazy because you have a section of women who want a guy to make the first move, you know, like they, they want the guy to be the man and say, Oh, like if you're outside and you're looking at the stars, they want the guy to maybe lean over and kiss them. But it's like during that time, men were like so afraid to almost do anything. It's like, okay, forget it. I'm not doing this. I'm not even thinking about doing it. I'll let her make the first step. And then in the same breath, I see women on social media typing saying, Hey, do men do men take the first step anymore, or do men? You know, it's like they want that, but then there's another half who's scaring the men from doing that. You know, it's it's crazy. Yeah, that's wild. I mean, I'm you know I'm a married lesbian, so I don't I don't right. deal with that type of thing. I'm you know I've never been <laughs> right <laughs> right <laughs> but, right. So so you're uh, good from. <laughs> 
Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I dated men. I mean, like, I considered myself bisexual for quite some time, so I did date right. men. I didn't. I don't have those kind of deep feelings about it, though, which was, was what I realized at some point. I was like, no, right. I'm, I'm just gay because, like, <laughs> <laughs> I just don't think that deeply about men. Like, I just would never would. Like, I'm like, they're just so. I, I get them. They're so simple. What is the problem? Right. Like, no, like, there's nothing to like be confused about here. Like, right. Like, you want something? Just tell them you want it, and then they'll just right. like, like, that's it. Like, I don't know. I didn't get it. So, like, like pretty much. Really how I realized it. Um, but yeah, I definitely see that. I mean, because you have women that want to be independent but then they don't want to be independent you know when it comes down to it i mean they'll say they're independent but then you know they would love a, a guy to be paying all their bills right they would love Absolutely. you know yep. that kind of support on the yep. same other end of it they might not tell everybody about it if it was happening but they would love it um yep. so yeah that's it's, it's very confusing to me i'm not going to pretend i understand um straight right. women <laughs> today because <laughs> i'm on your team on that one i, I don't right. know what's going on <laughs> <laughs> okay, so 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 uh um uh, um uh Kentaji Brown Jackson was was asked the question of what is a woman? And she uh what I think she just refrained from answering that question. But but she she did say she's not a biologist so she can't answer it. But you know, I think she just chose not to. So so uh what is as a feminist, what is your de definition of a woman? Um, adult female human i mean yeah. you know it's an adult female yeah. <laughs> you, right. say X -X. Exactly. you know you can say they have sex chromosomes um if you want um but essentially it's an adult female human that has female reproductive parts um or at least did at some point you know right. it's yeah you were born with that i mean yeah you were a little girl you grew up a little girl Right. Um, and yeah. you're you're a woman i mean you're female i mean um yeah the problem obviously is is you know trans women or women is the thing that they're saying now um and she I, i'm pretty sure she was coached to not answer those types Absolutely. of questions directly um seemed very coached but she was told just don't answer deflect um deflect deflect um you don't want to get into that um <laughs> exactly. and that's the thing is like i mean trans women are trans women right i mean you know, that's fine. They're trans women. I mean, so many trans women look more like a woman than I do. You know, they're like, there's a lot that are like very feminine and like ladylike. And, you know, I mean, Blair right. White's like one of the like hottest women I've ever seen. She's, she's not female, you know, okay. and it's just like, <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of trans women that look, look like women and that's fine. They are, you know, they're in a way they're a type of woman, but they're not female. Yeah. You know, you have to separate those two. And, you know, the trans rights activists do, just a ridiculous thing and call us um, cis, cis women, um, yes, which I think is, is just crazy. Um, oh yeah, I'm not defining here. us, defining us, which is like everybody. I mean, pretty much because trans is very, very rare. You know, it's probably right. like less than 1% are actually, actually really trans. Right. Um, defining us, which is like the entire, you know, more than half of the world and half of humanity as the thing that they're not, you know, essentially it's the opposite of the small group. Um, and we're like, we don't need a word for that. You know, like I find it offensive. Like I find actually this is like offensive word to me. Like, I'm like, right. don't use that. Don't say it. It's not necessary. I mean, right. trans women, we do have to say that that is the thing. Um, so that's fine. I, I mean, there are people and I'm all for it, but do not like try to erase women mm -hmm. like straight up. Don't try to erase women and to define us by, you know, that we're not you. Because you're not right. the, you are like, we're the foundation here. What the hell would a trans woman be if women didn't exist? Absolutely. Like, what are you trying to become, right? Like, how, where are you coming from on this? Like, so yep. without us, like, you don't, you don't have anything that you're trying to work towards becoming. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I find it, I find it odd and I find it, you know, just pretty offensive the way that um, biological women are being erased, um, especially, yeah, by we have the left and by democrats now too it's i mean it's pretty much you know 25 percent. i think like of the country would have a hard time now defining women or would say something like anyone who identifies as a woman i'm uh, like no this is not something you can self-identify as you know this is not how this works <laughs> like, right right <laughs> it, it, it's, it's so crazy because we, we got the uh so like i was going to ask you like how do you like um like when you hear these pronouns 
like, do you think that these pronouns are needed or you, or you think that's just something that's like, that's also blurring the gender lines? Well, what do you mean? Just I think you froze up. Okay. Oh. Oh, sorry. Okay. Do you mean just people like announcing their preferred pronouns or just putting yeah, them next yeah, to their yeah, name? Yeah. Okay. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the pronouns, yeah, the pronouns like in their bio or saying, mm -hmm. uh, call me, uh, I'm, uh, she, <laughs> they, or, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I think it's, I mean, they're trying to virtue signal, right? They're trying to say that they support trans, trans people. And right. so if they do that, like if, you know, so-called cis people or like whatever do that then it validates um you know trans people you know also showing their pronouns right because then right. if everybody's doing it then it's fine everybody just tells everybody their pronouns which obviously right. isn't working out very well as we can see so not everybody's going to do it but interestingly right. when i ran for office um people would tell me i need to put my pronouns in my in my profile in my bio because i was a democrat at the time and they thought they owned right. me and they yep. would tell me that, and I, I never did. I'd just be like, yeah, sure. And I'm just like, I'm not doing that. Like, it's ridiculous. Like, my name's Heidi. Like, what the heck do you think my pronouns are? Like, have you ever met right. a dude named Heidi? Like, it's not confusing. <laughs> like, it's not confusing at all. Like, everybody knows what's going on here. Like, I don't need to, you know, describe right. it. And I could see if you did, like, if you were really, really androgynous or something, or you are a trans person, and you just want to make it clear, then fine. I don't have a problem with that. But everybody doing it is, like, just ludicrous and, and un right. unnecessary, frankly, yeah. Right. Yeah. Have you have you ever been have you ever been uh, put in a situation where you you had to call like like uh, a guy who just looks totally like a guy uh, she? Well, are you to refer to her as, um, as like a she or yeah her? Uh, I'm trying to think. I mean, I've definitely had people do the they thing. Right. So I've definitely had to say they, which is really confusing and kind of hard you have to like really remember it so right i have right, had right. that um i mean i've definitely called trans women she i don't i don't know if they've looked hyper masculine though when i did or anything but i mean right. if you know i just i just would do it i mean it's just not a big deal to me i mean if somebody right. prefers it it's not a huge deal i don't really care um right. the day thing is kind of weird because that's just like when nobody we don't really use that so that's always a little awkward for me um or just the weird ones like they have like z or zim or they have all kinds of like weird stuff so if people are doing that then that's confusing um but yeah i mean i will i will definitely call somebody what they want to be called but i think like what i think is that if they look a certain way that's what they should be called you know what i mean like if if you, right. you're you know if you look like a man like an actual man you can't be offended if somebody says he or him like because it's just that's just how it is and if right. you look like a woman right. you can't really be offended if they say she um because that's how you're presenting to right. the world and the world just has eyeballs and just looks and makes a quick determination and like that's it there's you know and if you are something else you cannot be offended right. by that you can tell them like hey in the future i prefer if you use this like if you don't mind but right you know that's still up to right. them i mean it's just like people just see what they see and do what is the societal norm and there's really nothing that you can do to change that. Like, no one's going to, you know, we're not going to flip um, our pronouns. I, I think, honestly, they're trying to get rid of pronouns completely, is what I think is the actual yeah. goal. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah, just, like, trying to get rid of women, trying to get rid of pronouns, trying to, like, basically, like, say everybody's the same. Um, because that's Marxism. Yep. I mean, that's just, that's just straight up Marxism. Is like, everybody's oppressed. Everybody's the same. We don't have an identity until the state tells us what our identity is. Um, and that's sort of how, you know, Maoism yep. and other things have gone through history. Absolutely. So, so, okay. So, so, um, let's talk about, uh, uh, Leah Thomas. So, um, how do you feel about Leah Thomas, uh, I guess, uh, competing in women's sports in college and where, where does, the, does this lead to more of, um, of, our trans competing in women's sports or, or do you think it's going to go the opposite way where um, there's going to be some backlash? There's going to be, uh, you know, a, a totally different future for trans athletes. Yeah. I do not think um, Leah Thomas should be competing against women. It's just, it's not possible um, for somebody that grew up and went through, especially went through male puberty um, to not have, I think it's at least three times the amount 
of, um, you know, testosterone and, you know, there's just no way, I don't care what kind of hormones you take, you're still going to be at an advantage. Um, you right. know, you're obviously larger, you have more muscle <laughs> on your body. Um, there's just certain things that come with that. Um, so I think that people are seeing that. I mean, if you look at that picture when they're on the podium, I mean, like that is a male body. Absolutely. I mean, she can call herself Leah if she wants, but that's a male body. I'm competing against women's bodies. And I think it's pretty pathetic, actually, like to do that. I mean, because you're just like a mediocre athlete and you're just, you know, you're really going to switch and then compete against women and be number one. And you got to feel bad about that. You know what I mean? Like at some point, yes. like whatever he, she, I don't even care. Like, but like Leah has to feel bad about that at some point. I predict that Leah detransitions, honestly, at some point, because they feel really bad once they get some actual real mental health um, mm-hmm. and not just this affirm or affirmation therapy is what they give to people now, um, which it means they just say, oh, yes, if you say you're trans, then you're trans and we'll just go along with it. We won't try to see if there's a route to this or anything. Um, so I think that when, you know, they get some actual therapy, then um, they'll feel bad. They'll detransition. They'll probably write a book. I don't know. But I think, honestly, mm-hmm. Leah Thomas will be the catalyst for ending um definitely men and women's sports or you know male body people in women's sports because it's so obvious and, and so wrong um it just can't happen i mean just it just can't i mean it's just obvious it's just one of those things that's just so blatant and you know like like, like trans trans women in women's prisons that's another thing that's just like blatant oh where you're gosh. like you can't you can't have that like there's just some things that are just so but the thing is with, with prisoners no one cares right because they're like they're prisoners so they don't right. get the like the care and the, the but with athletes okay, everybody can relate to that. You know, like you have a daughter that's an athlete, like you're like, okay, I get sports. So I really think that the whole Leah Thomas situation will be a catalyst. And I'm, I'm seeing it like more people, less people are scared to say stuff about it. Now. Um, the trans rights activists have like really nothing to say um, before they would really go hard. And now like, I, I mean, I can say whatever I want pretty much. And they don't, they have nothing, you know, they right. have like nothing. They have nothing to say. Because, like, right. and, and no one's on their side anymore. It's just, it's just a small, like, group now and it's yeah they're, they're grasping at straws they're basically doing like hail mary's right now is how i picture yep. it but we're just it's just like you know biology and reality will win essentially it's just too it's too obvious right it, it, it's so crazy because like i was telling somebody the other day i think th- i think when this all comes to an end i think it's going to stop when black guys who didn't make it to the NBA, like throws on a wig and then start playing in the WNBA and start dunking. I think at that point, people go, <laughs> they be like, okay, all right, we were just joking. Yeah. All this is over. <laughs> think about that. I mean, honestly, yeah. though, like you right. had Dennis Rodman, that's the closest thing. Right, right. Yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> but if Dennis Rodman went like and was playing in WNBA, right. Right. Close, right? Absolutely. Right. So yeah, right. I think like yeah, it's just so blatant, right? If you see that, I mean, it's obvious. It's just like, I mean, that's why we separate sports by the sexes. It's just like, right? I actually <laughs> saw like the worst argument too. Somebody actually made the argument that eventually um, women will start beating men, and that the reason they separated them. This is a real argument somebody made. The reason they separated men and women was because women were were too good. And they were beating men. Oh, my gosh. And they used to compete together, but the women were just, like, too good. And they were just beating the men. And I was just, like, and they found some weird examples, like, some random, like, random <laughs> cases of, like, women being better than men. Or, like, <laughs> shot put or, like, some random thing. And, and you're just, like, this is, like, you're just insane. You're just losing. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's like Hail Marys. It's like they're losing. They're just, like, yeah. at, like reaching so far. <laughs> that, is, that is ridiculous. So, 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 oh, so why, why do you... Why do you think, see, I see what I think is um, more people, I mean, even not, not just only feminists, but I feel like more people need to speak out just period, you know, and, and, and I feel like you have a section that is sitting on the sidelines. They're, they're actually just sitting on the sidelines, just allowing a lot of this stuff to happen. And, and, and it, and it's and I feel like they don't want to hurt like their friends' feelings or you know they they they, they rather mm. cause, because it's that you get labels thrown on you when you go against what's the wave you know and and, and I feel like a lot of people like like how how can we get people to speak out more like like have you like how can we do that because sometimes I feel like me mm-hmm. sometimes I feel like 
I feel like I'm the only one speaking out, but I know I'm not. But I sometimes I feel yeah. like I think you have to support them. I think you have to literally like go to people and you know, if they have that opinion, but they're like, I don't want to say anything though, because you know, I think you have to be like, well, I have your back. And I think this Absolutely. is where like men actually need to like step in and be like, Hey women, we got your back. Like we yep. got your back. Like this is like, I don't care what beef we had before. I don't care. Like, like whatever happened or like, if you told me I was trash, you know, last year, I don't care. <laughs> Cause, like, <Yep. laughs> like, Cause I'm going to have your back on this one because I yep. want to see women exist. I don't want women to be erased. You know, yep. I do not want to see that happen. Like it's just, it can't happen. And yep. so I think that, men really do need to step up. I mean, I'm not putting it all on men because it's not all on you guys at all. Right. But I think that women will feel more comfortable the more men stand up and say something, but also say, I got your back if you want to say something. Absolutely. So I think that's really important to do. And I, I, I think it's a part of, uh, Press, I think it's part of what you were saying uh, about uh, we, are, we are here to protect. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, and so, yeah. and so I think I think just you know what I'm saying, just offering that support is, is a form of pr- protecting women. You know what I'm saying? Yep. It is. I, it needs to be done. It needs to be done. I understand why men are hesitant to do it. You know, I, I definitely get that because they haven't felt, you know, the same kind of love back and you know, any kind of support right. from, you know, these particular women that might want to, you know, say things, but you might not even be on the same team. But it's so important because, you know, we're not going to have, you know, mothers and daughters one day if we go down this road. It's just, and right. yeah, you, so men have to say something because men depend on women to exist. So, absolutely. And women yeah, depend absolutely. on men to exist. So it's, yep. just, it's just how it goes. So we have to depend on each other and, you know, you know people need to support each other. And it, it's just, to me, it's just, you don't, we're, I mean, we haven't even talked about trans men, you know what I mean? Like, it's, nope. they are normally left out of the conversation completely. I think 90 some percent of the discourse is around trans women. And right. we're not talking about trans men. And you just got to ask yourself why? And yep. <laughs> because they're women. Um, and it's because, yep. you know, men essentially are, you know, being like, I want to be a woman and just, you know, shoving themselves in there and being, you know, dominant about it and being really aggressive about it. And right. women just aren't really that way. They're not as aggressive. They might like, you know, be a trans man, but they're just not like as aggressive about it. They're not just like in everybody, every man's face. Like I'm a man, you know, like, right. I was like, let me, like, like, right. you know? it, it, exactly. just don't, like really see that. It might could happen. It's probably super rare. I, I bet it does happen, but it's like, it's just not like this mainstream thing, you know? Yeah. Right. Very yeah, odd. Yeah. yeah. So, so I, I'm, we we have we have to we have to find a way we have to find a way to to i mean do okay so the the feminists do okay most of the feminists i would assume do, do they support democratic candidates because like 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 most of most of um the african american community we vote almost 90 something percent for the democrats and i'm out here just trying to tell black people like yo like we, the Democrats haven't done nothing for us for like yeah. sixty years. Like, 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 why do we keep checking? See, and, and it's so crazy because I was even as a kid, it was like I was even brainwashed to you know, <clears throat> uh, go down the line, look at the ballot, and go down the line. If you had a D beside it, I didn't care what what you believe in anything. It was a D. Just check yeah. it all the way down the line. That's you what know? we're taught. It's a cult. We're taught right. that. I yep. remember growing up, and you're a little kid, and they tell you you're a Democrat. And this family's yep. de- Democrats, and that's how it is. And we're Democrats, yep. and you're just like, okay, it's just sort of like you know, you believe in Jesus, and you're a Democrat. It's just like, just <laughs> right. like exactly. Just you, that's it. And you're like, exactly. okay, that's it. And so, like, it's exactly, like, kind of a cult mentality. You know, it's very much like you have to like indoctrinate um, that kind of thinking. And I think it's because it's it's not as natural. Like you know that like it's it's like Democrats are kind of progressive; they want all this change. It's not as natural, so you have to indoctrinate. I think yeah. harder. I think conservatism is kind of just more natural. It's just sort of like, well, just keep things the same, then you know, it's not like, right. like, yep. it's not like you don't really <laughs> exactly. have to like indoctrinate that necessarily, you know. And now yep. it's kind of you kind of do now a little bit more. You see more of it because it's like a reactionary. Um, but I think like traditionally, it was just sort of if you're conservative, it just means you just are conservative. You just like things the way they are, and you don't want any radical changes going on. Right. Um, and you want to, you know, to preserve what you think is, you know, tradition, um, and you actually want to keep it the way it is. So, yeah, it, it's it's rough. I mean, I would say feminist to, to address your original question. Yeah, I think that most people that would identify themselves as feminists um, would vote D, probably down the line. 
Right. Um, when I talk to women that are conservative, there's no way that like publicly they would say they're a feminist. But when I actually talk to them and get down to it, they agree with every single point that like a radical feminist would make pretty much, <laughs> yes. or at least like 80 to 90 percent of them, you know, and they're pretty much on board. But they do not want to say that they're a feminist because in their mind, everybody sees it as you know, a negative, like, oh, I hate men. I'm, I'm Absolutely. like this. They don't want to come off like that. And so that's unfortunate. Um, but you know, you don't have a lot of good choices in this country, first of all. So D or R is not really like exciting. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Absolutely. So, you know, we need more choices there. That's for that's for sure. So you end up going with the one you think is like, you know, you're in your, your team. Um, yep. so that's yeah, I mean feminists will typically be Democrats, of course. Um, at least open openly feminist, but I think they're changing. I mean, I know a lot of feminists in like Florida, for example, that love Ron DeSantis. You know, that, right. I mean, there, there is some change going on where feminists are like, you know what? No, I'm going to vote for this Republican because he's the only one protecting women's rights right now. Absolutely. Like, I'm not going to vote for this person who's not doing it. And I think we need to do that. We need to be like, you know what? Um, you know, whether you want to be a Democrat, or Republican, independent, I don't care. But if it's about your fundamental rights, then you make a stand. And you got to tell people about it. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Uh, one, one, one more question. One more question. Yeah. Okay. So, um, how do you feel? How do you feel about? Um, I, uh, I I saw an article. Let, let me see. I saw an article uh, uh, this morning. This is probably like the maybe fourth or fifth article I seen on this. Um, schools giving students uh, puberty blockers. You know, it, it, like 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 like. What is going on? How, how do you how do you feel about that? Obviously, that's horrible. I mean, that's child abuse, and that's right. just it, it, it's horrible. Like the effects of not going through puberty on a child's body are permanent. Right. Um. So there's things that you can't get back. Um. When you skip puberty, it's just not going to happen. I mean, there's going to be women. There are actually there are women that transition to men already trying to detransition. And yep. they're having a really hard time because, I mean, whatever, testosterone serious. I mean, they cannot have kids now. They, you know, they have tons of facial hair and body hair. They have a lower voice. Mm -hmm. um, you're seeing these effects now. And these women that are women, you know, they, they detransition. And now they look like men. And they, you know, their bodies won't function as a woman's body. And they can get cancer. Um, all kinds of things that can happen. Um, so it, it's horrible to do. I'm 100% against um ever having a kid transition it's completely an adult decision right. um, that should happen when you're an adult um, no one should ever be pushed into it it's certainly not at your school and it's it's horrible because they're going it's the affirmation therapy it's they're going into a counselor and they're taught that this is something we that we just affirm um and right. so they're saying yeah. okay you're just trans we just affirm it and you know i mean i guess like some of them are you know letting them have hormones and different things so right. I mean, hideous. I mean, just really, really disgusting and unbelievable. Right. Yeah. yeah, we are. Uh, we we want to thank you. We want to thank, thank you very, very much for coming on. And and, and, and this was amazing. Uh, a lot of our audience can learn, you know, just learn a lot. You know, just just how we can all come together. How we can all, you know, like we don't have to agree on everything. You know, we can all come together on some things. Is there anything you want to? Uh, you want to say last and last words or promote or, 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 or anything? Yeah, I would just say to anybody who's scared of voicing their opinion about this, don't be scared. I mean, people are going to have your back um, and, you know, stick up for women if that's what you want to do, you know, stick yep. up for, you know, the female body because that's where you came from and that's, <laughs> that's yes. where humanity <laughs> came from. And that's if we don't yep. stick up for that, then we're, we're toast. So I would say that, and then I would say follow me on Twitter if you'd like to be connected, and it's um, Heidi Briones, H-E-I-D-I-B-R-I-O-N-E-S, and I'd love to connect with you there, and let's work together to stop the madness. I mean, whether we agree with other things or not, I think a lot of us agree that women are women and they should be protected, Right. <laughs> and we can, we can work together on that, so let's, let's um, defeat the madness together. Thank you very much. Perfect. Thank you. So much Thank of course. You're welcome. Thank you, guys. Yep. Thanks for having me.